Chris Brown TV, what's good, man? What's up? What's up? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm hyped. I'm pumped. I've been waiting for this all day. I'm not going to lie. Man, cool, cool. Me too, me too. So, for the people who don't know, where you from, man? I'm from everywhere, really. I'm a military brat. Uh, but I've been here for four years. Um, my family's from Georgia, so I claim Georgia. I claim that's where I'm from because that's where my family from. That's where my mom's side of the family's from. So, I'm from Georgia. Okay, cool, cool. So now, what made you want to do YouTube and music? Because you do vlogs, you do social experiments, you do updates, as well as music. So what made you want to do both? Uh, so it started off with YouTube. Uh, I was doing YouTube just because I had thought, while watching all these YouTube videos, I thought YouTubers were cool. So I was like, I'm going to become a YouTuber. So that's what I did. And then the music, I'm not going to lie, the music came because of COVID-19 and I was bored. Um, so... I had a promotion team called Empire Promotions. I had this artist called Slim Doja, and I would promote him. So um, when COVID had happened, he was still going to the studio, but the promotion team had stopped because the clubs were shut down. And I had went with him to the studio, and I was like, I think I want to get in the studio. And then one time, me and my friend went to the studio, and my other friend, who was supposed to have a session, didn't come. So I just went in and took his place in his session, and that's when I started making music. I made my first song that day, and I just kept going with it. Okay, cool, cool. So how's your life changed since you started doing all of this? Um, I ain't gonna lie, life didn't change that much because I had already had a lot of people knowing me by the time I had started the music. Like my fan base was already there when I started the music from the YouTube and the promotion team. So I had already had a lot of people know me. And the only thing that I could say that really changed during music was it was more time commitment. And now I have something else to juggle because I felt like I was juggling a lot. And then when I did music, it was like, music was more of a time commitment and more of a, com more of a commitment than everything else I was doing at the time. So it was like, Wow, just like a big commitment. That's that's all I can really say about music. Okay, okay. Well, um, talking about your your EP intro to an introvert. What was it like making that? It was it was live. I like I like introduction to an introvert. I had the idea when I had made my first single, Chosen. I had told my uh, I was working with T Woods back then at HQCB. I told him, yeah, I'm gonna make five songs. And the first five songs I make, I'm going to make it an EP. But I didn't know what I was going to call it. And I called it Introduction to an Introvert because I really was an introvert and I really had to teach myself how to talk to people and network with people. Like before, before all the music and before the YouTube and stuff, I was a really to myself person. Like my senior year, I was... I talked to people, but I was nowhere near what I was doing when I got to college. College was when I really started breaking out my bubble and started talking to people. And it was really just because of the business aspect. Like, I knew I had to network with people if I wanted to go somewhere. So that's why I had to learn and force myself to talk to people. Okay, cool, cool. So how did you know that the project was completed? How did you know, yo, it's done, it's finalized, I don't need to do anything else, anything more with it? Because it was like after I recorded my fifth song, I, I already knew, like I said, once I'm done with my fifth song, like I'm putting my first five songs and that's going to be my EP. And then uh, actually after that, we had went because we had heard me and, me and my producer at the time, T. Woods, or engineer at the time, T. Woods, we had heard like some stuff that could have been better. So after I had recorded my fifth song, I went back like two more days. And he mixed and mastered, like, the songs that needed to be mixed and mastered, which was my first three songs. So, my first singles, my first three singles sound different from the one on the EP because the first three singles weren't mixed and mastered all the way. And then, before I put them on the EP, we went back for, like, two, three hours and mixed and mastered those songs and put them. So, they sound different. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. All right, cool. Well, I saw that Double Cup slowed version hit a thousand streams, so congrats yeah, on that, man. How that does, was crazy. Yeah, how does that feel? 
That was absolutely crazy because the thing is, I don't really pay attention to my numbers because I be so busy, like, working the 9 to 5 and doing all that other stuff. So, like, when I get home, I go to sleep. And really how I know about my numbers is that I'll get emails. And, like, that time I had got an email, it said trending on Audio Mac. And usually I don't read my emails, but I have seen it in bold, bold letters trending on Audio Mac. So I click, and it's like, Double cup, slow version, hit a thousand streams, mm. you're trending. And then I was like, whoa, like, that's crazy because I don't even pay attention. Like, I don't really know, like, the numbers until I get, like, a notification. Like, mm. on Instagram, the notification would be like, you got 200 views or on your IGTV or something like that. And then that's when I know, oh, I got 200 views. People are really watching this. Or I got a thousand streams on Audio Mac. Like, I don't really know. It's not like I'm watching the numbers. So it was like really like a surprise. Like, it was like, whoa. And I was like, smooth. We just hit the top of streams. Like, I was so excited. Man, that's lit. Is that your most popular song? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I don't know. Like, I think my the song that got the most views right now is a song I did with my best friend, my brother Ramon in the cut. It's called Double... No, that's not. That's the song that we were just talking about. It's called Don't Leave Me Alone. That song, that music video on YouTube has like 2.1K views right now. Like over 100 likes. That's the one that's going crazy on YouTube. But all my songs on different platforms go do different numbers. So mm. I don't know what really is my most popular song. I would want to say it's Fake Love because that's my favorite song. But I don't know. Man, okay, cool. I got you. I got you. Well, you say I'm the voice of the next gen, and that's not even a question on who I do it for. Yeah. So touch on that a little bit. Yeah, I really feel that way. I really feel like I'm the voice of the next generation. Like, I'm different. Um, when you think of a rapper, or you think of an artist, you don't really think of my type of sound. You think of like somebody who like out here for real on, on some like splurge or like on some trap rap but i'm really like oh uh, like melodic i'm just a vibe really i get on songs different ways uh i feel like i'm the voice of the next generation because i'm so versatile like one of my favorite artists is drake because he's so versatile i feel like i'm the next mm -hmm. next drake like that in the way that i'm versatile and i can really get on any song like right now i just have singing songs out but i just did a couple songs at stone creek sound where i'm just rapping and i don't sing so i'll be doing it all i just feel like i'm the voice of the next generation yeah, right right and you also say you're the king of your city and i feel like whenever you do something you're supposed to feel like you're the best at it so i, yeah. I found no problem with you saying that yeah, but what, said, what mindset were you in whenever i you said, said that? i feel like a king in my city yeah because oh, okay. because like when I'm in my, I don't feel like I'm the king of the city because I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like, you know, having that discussion right now. Right now, I'm still progressing and growing. So I'm not saying I'm the king of music in SA in no type of way or form. It's, I know there's people who way better out there. I'm still growing. I only been at six months. But when I'm in the city, like I get so much love and recognition everywhere. That's why I said I feel like a king of my city because everybody know me like every spot like when i go out it just be random random people walk you chris brown i'll be watching your music videos mm -hmm. and all that so that's why i feel like a king in my city because i get so much love while out and about in that city. that's why i feel like a king in my city you feel me okay that's what's up that's what's up so what's it been like making music during COVID 19. it's been i feel like it's been good i feel like i wouldn't be as focused if, if it wasn't a pandemic right now because I'm really a person who likes to party. Like I said, like before the music, I was a promoter. So I really be partying all the time. So when I didn't have anything to do, it really made me lock in and really get to work with the music. So I feel like it was like it happened for a reason. I feel like I wouldn't be going as hard if it didn't happen right now, if I wasn't making music right now. Okay, I got you. I got you. So take me through your creative process a, a little bit. All right, so my creative process, I'm gonna try to take it from the very beginning. So yeah, from the very I get top. in the studio, I come in, dap smooth up, smooth is usually, this is smooth music studios. Smooth usually be right here at the computer or YB, YB is my producer. Well, yeah, YB is my producer, he'll have beats, he'll go through them, he'll be clicking them 
and he'll tell me, stop when you feel something. So mm -hmm. he'll play beats. He'll play a beat that I like. I'll be like, oh yeah, I like that YB. And then he'll be like, all right, go ahead, write. So I sit, sit back, listen to what the song is telling me. I'll say a little bit of stuff, hum, freestyle. Whatever I think is good, I write it down. And then I try to tell a story, so I piece it together. And then usually I'm, all my raps right now is just like, usually like every every line, the last word is going to match, match. So that's how I'll be doing it. And then I'll come up with a hook. And then after I've seen that hook, I'll go put it, record it, go in the mic, go in the mic, record, record what I'm about to record, the hook. And then I'll do the verse. And then usually, like, I'm not going to lie, usually... Since I've been here at Spoon Music Studios, it'll be YB, RT, or it'll be some other older artist in here, or just other artists in general in here, and they'll hear it, and if they like it, they'll be like, let me hop on that. Or if I hear them singing something, I'll be like, you you can hop on this, like hop on this feature. And then they'll get on it, or if not, I'll write a whole song by myself. Like, if, when I first started out, I think I did like 10 singles just, that was all singles. My first 10 songs were all singles. So I was writing verse, hook. You know what I'm saying? I can do the whole song. But I'd rather collaborate with people. I feel like if you feel like you can hop on my song, hop on my song. I feel like like it's better to have numbers and better to have two people on the song. Like it's, it's cool still to have one just to show people you can do it, to put out singles just to show people you can do it. But I think features is live. I think features is live. Right, right. So do you feel like you faced a lot of hate or have faced hate in the past? I feel like in the past, yeah. In the past when I first started off, man, I was so mad because I just felt like everybody was hating on me. Nobody didn't want to see me win. But I feel like now, no, nah, I get a lot of love now. But it took it took a long, I'm not going to lie, it took a long, it took a lot. And it was a long, it, I had to go a long way to get to the point where people started showing me love. Mm -hmm. Like, I had to grind when people was telling me, like, your song is not going to blow, you should stop. But I ain't going to lie, it wasn't really that many people telling me that. I had, like, one one negative comment when my first song came out. And ever since then, I don't really remember somebody saying something that really hurt my feelings about my song. It's just been like, yeah, but it's hate. It, you know, as an artist, it's always people hating, you know what I'm saying? Because they want to be in your position. That's why I feel like people hate. They want to be in your position. And people don't want to see you better, doing better than them. They want to see you at our level. So once you start doing better than them, that's when I feel like the hate starts. Mm -hmm. But I feel like now I get a lot of love just because I feel like I had numbers. I feel like once the numbers hit, and once stuff started happening, I started performing and music videos started dropping and I was had the racks in the video, then people was like, oh, okay, yeah. Like and that's why I made fake love, because it's like I was getting I'm getting love, but now it's you wasn't you wasn't loving me back then when I was starting out, but you loving me now because you see what I'm doing out here. So yeah. Okay, I got you, I got you. So as you know, um, doing music and doing the YouTube thing, that's a business, right? So yeah. was there anything about the business that caught you off guard or took you by surprise when you first started out? Like, oh shit, I didn't see that coming? Yeah, that whole concept that it was a business just threw me off because so many times like, I would just watch people and they would just be talking about like, just follow a dream, everything's not about money. And then as soon as I get into the music business, it's like, before you start anything, where's the money? Where's the deposit? Where's your budget? Mm -hmm. And that just like had me shook. I'm like, I thought I was just here because I was chasing my dreams. Like I thought it was free. Like, and cause that's that's the type of person I am. If I can do something for you for free, I do something for you for free. Like all my performances I've done, they've been free. I I don't get done. And all my music videos, I I put up the money. I don't I don't ask nobody for money for my music videos. All the studio time I pay for it. So like I was. I'm the type of person who just be like, I'm not going to say just throwing money, but I I pay a lot of, a lot of stuff isn't about money to me. It's about chasing my dreams. When I do this music, it's because this is what I love to do. It's not because of the money. It's because this is what I love to do. This is what I dream about since I was a kid. So the fact that people was like, uh, let's
let me just get let me just get a deposit before I do this or you gotta throw me some bread before anything happened. That just had me shook. And that's how it is though. Cause at the end of the day, I wasn't I wasn't considering like to other people this is a job because to me it's a job. I take it serious, but it's like this is my dream, so it's more of the passion for me, it's not more of the money. Mm. So okay. it just had me throw off that. But at the end of the day, like it's a very important lesson that music is really ninety percent business and like ten percent everything else. Okay. Okay, I got you, I got you. Now since you started anything or since you started everything, have you taken any L's at all? I've taken a lot of L's. <laughs> because as an artist and I'm an ambitious artist, so I be asking, like, I be in DMs like Hey, if I see if I see somebody like if I see a concert or people performing, I'd be like, Hey, you should put me in that concert and stuff. So I heard a lot of no's like, no, no. And it's cause San Antonio got those main people in the city who got clout and that's who everybody want at they at they stuff. They not really So I take an L because you know what I'm saying? I'm not really that known in San Antonio as like one of the main people you think about in San San Antonio rap scene. I'm far from it. So I took a lot of L's. I took a lot of no's because I ask I ask a lot of questions. So I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm not afraid to ask to like put me on that performance or put me in that music video, put me on that feature. So a lot of people said no, but I got a lot of yeses too. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Well, what about some new music coming out? New music coming out? All right. It's a lot of new music coming out. All this, all the songs that I dropped, is from a long time ago. It's from a long time ago. Like the last song I dropped, Double Cup. We probably did that like two months ago. So I have a lot of songs. They just in the vault. They just in the vault. A lot of songs they in the vault. And then yeah, I got Double Cup just dropped. Me and Smooth Music got another song. I got a song with Archie. I got a song with. TV Robbie, I just recorded like this weekend, like four or five songs on a computation album that's about to come out. So, yeah, I got a lot of songs that's about to drop, and I don't really throw away none of my songs. All the songs I make, I drop them. So, it's a lot of new music on the way. So just stay tuned for that. So you got a message to your supporters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Follow your dreams. That's that's the biggest message I'm gonna put. And then. You gotta invest in your dreams too. Like, you see, I got this Forever 21 tag on. I left this on on purpose because I I'll be working a nine to five just to just to do this music. All the money from my nine to five goes to this music. So you gotta invest in your dreams and you gotta follow your dreams like religiously. Like you can't stop. You gotta keep going at it no matter what nobody say. You gotta you gotta put it on for yourself and just follow your dreams. That's the biggest message I can give to my supporters: follow your dreams religiously. Like without. Without any thought, without like, well, with thought, but follow your dreams to the max. That's that's the message. Man. Chris Brown, appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Shout out to Live Media. Shout out Smooth Music Studio. Shout out Smooth Music. Shout out YB. Shout out TV Robbie. Shout out Archie Soul. I got too many people to shout out, but you know, if I rock with you, shout out my team.